Now we're going to look at electrochemistry thermodynamics. How are we going to take into account electrochemistry or why in fact do we need to take into account electrochemistry and thermodynamics? Well, redox reactions, the electrons move. They move from the species as being uh, oxidized to the species as being reduced. So electrons are being transported and if you put in separate containers the oxidation reaction and the reduction reaction you can have these electrons not being transferred on a molecular level like when you put zinc solid zinc into copper 2 plus solution but you can have these electrons being transferred over a wire and if you connect that wire to say a light bulb or an electric motor then you can do electric work so that is how we're going to introduce electrochemistry into thermodynamics. We're going to consider the work done in moving electrons from one region of high potential to a region of low potential. In other words, we're going to look at electrical work. This may be uh, familiar from introductory physics. Uh, this is the how you calculate electric work. You have a potential. Phi is the electric potential. And Q is the charge. So if you move charge through an electric potential, you do electrical work. If we look at our usual diagram here, this will be electric potential versus distance. So here if you have a potential gradient over space, say at this region of space you have high electric potential, this region of space you have low electric potential, what will happen if you have an electron in a high electric potential, it will flow down to the region of low electric potential. For example, if you have a battery, one end of the battery is high potential, the other is low. So if you hook up that battery to a wire, you can make electrons flow from the high potential side of the battery to the low potential side of the battery. This is an intensive variable. This corresponds to a potential and the gradient and potential will lead to a flux of an extensive variable. In this case, it's electrons or more generally, it's charge if you're a physicist, but we're chemists and we're interested in electrons. This is how you do electrical work. But as we said, we're chemists and we're interested in number, you know, atoms and molecules and moles and so on. So here N will correspond to moles of some, we're going to use the ions. Note these reactions here are have charges and charges when you move them through a potential will do electrical work. So far we've not considered charges. All the species we considered so far have been neutral. But now we're going to consider charge and with charge you have the potential to do electric work. So here's the number of moles of ions. Those are things that carry charge. And this is the Z is corresponds to assigned charge. Signed mean positive for cations and negative for anions. For example here Z would be plus 2. If you had something like sulfate Z would be minus 2. And finally uh, so th if you multiply the sign charge on the ion by the number of moles of ions that would give you the moles of charge or moles of electrons actually because if you have two plus that means you've taken away two electrons so these are the number of moles times the charge the sign charge on each ion will give you the number of charges but what we don't what we want in order to calculate electric work is the charge so we need a proportionality constant between the number of charges and their actual charge and that's what Faraday is that's what the F is F which is called the Faraday named after Faraday who looked at electrical stuff back in the 1800s or 1700s maybe the Faraday uh, gives you the proportionality constant between charge and moles of electrons. And so there's a conversion factor. So if you take the number of moles multiplied by the of the ions, multiplied by the charge in the ions, multiplied by the Faraday, then you get the total charge that you're now going to move through an electric potential. And the unit of a charge is a coulomb, abbreviated C. And so that's how we're going to do it. This review some uh, concepts in introductory physics about work. We're just going to add work. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to get a new master equation which, which contains electrical work. Uh, just to review, how did we get that master equation of chemical thermodynamics? Well, basically we started with the first law of thermodynamics, du, 
is dq plus dw. Then we started to put some constraints on work. So first we said <coughs> dq minus pdv, that was only pv work. Then we said, oh, how about uh, chemical work? So now we have dq plus pdv plus chemical work. And chemical work, we said, was the sum over, for a chemical reaction, for example, the sum over products and reactants of the chemical potential times dni, chemical potential of that species. So this was PV work plus chemical work. And now what we're going to do is to add on to this, guess what? Plus PDV plus the sum of the chemical potential. Now we're going to add on electrical work. So it'll be the sum over all the ions that are in the system participating in the reaction of the potential of that experienced by that ion times the charge and remember the charge is ZFDN. So if we put a charge of ZFDN through potential phi we do electrical work. So now we've added on to work PV work, chemical work and PV work. Uh, sorry and electrical work. Okay, so that's how we're going to introduce it. So now if we just go ahead to the dot dot dot, remember we got the master equation for chemical thermodynamics, you might want to review that, but we'll just write it down here. dg is minus s dt plus v dp plus the chemical work, sum over i of mu sub i dni plus the electrical work, sum over i of uh, the charge ZF times the potential DNI. We can simplify this. There's a DNI there and a DNI here. So we can pull that out and that'll be just minus SDT plus VDP plus the sum of mu I plus ZF phi. These are all I's DNI. And let's call this by a different symbol. We'll call this mu i with a tilde above it. And we'll call this the electrochemical potential. So written with that new notation is minus s dt plus v dp plus the sum over i of the electrochemical potential of i. D and I. So it's actually it wasn't so bad to include electrical work. All we did was include the electrical work and the chemical work and give it a new symbol, mu tilde I. So there it is. There's the master equation for chemical thermodynamics in which we included electrical work, which we have to do if our system contains ions. That's that. Now uh, let's look at what's going to happen at constant temperature and pressure. So constant temperature and pressure, constant temperature that goes away, constant pressure that goes away, the incremental change in free energy when you add a certain number of moles will just be the sum of mu i dni. Again, exactly the same thing we had before, except now we're using electrochemical potential instead of chemical potential. And let's consider one more thing. At equilibrium, we have dg is equal to zero and therefore we end up with exactly the same thing we had before. Maybe the sum of all species, and let's look at a chemical reaction, of the sine stoichiometric coefficient of that species times the electrochemical potential of that species has to equal zero for reaction. And again, recall that this is the signed coefficient in the balanced chemical reaction. So uh, there it is at equilibrium. That wasn't too bad. All we do is substitute the symbol for mu, uh, substitute for mu the symbol mu tilde. And we everything we said before about the master chemical, uh, master equation of chemical thermodynamics and equilibrium and all that stuff is the same except now we're using electrochemical potential. All right, that wasn't so bad. So now next lecture we're going to talk about EMF, electromotive force, the Nernst equation, and membrane potential.